Uh, there we go. I may have like not deleted production half an hour ago, uh, but what I may have done is deleted the root configuration of our largest client, so I'm a little jittery on adrenaline right now. So aside from that, uh, hopefully my team is fixing things right now. Um, I want to talk about a cool little tool that we have discovered. Uh, um, we did not make it, um, but we're starting to utilize it. It's called Prism. Um, so the first little diagram here is what a typical Selenium setup looks like. You've got your script, talks to the remote Selenium server because, of course, everybody uses the remote server. Hits the driver, hits the browser, then runs through a proxy because, again, everybody should be running their stuff through a proxy, and then finally hits your app. But what if your application is similar to like ours, where it's really just a thin client to an API. So you end up with you know, the same sort of loop, then you hit your proxy, but then you go to the app or you go to the API. And that is an absolute pain in the butt when you have on-demand continuous delivery environments uh, spinning up and down, because now you need to have the API spun up in your build system every single time you run a build. Um, as well as the app. So the, the problem is, how do we get rid of the app? And so what we ended up finding was a tool called Prism, which has a whole bunch of magic, and I realize this is really like a full 40-minute talk, so we're going to skip over a lot of the magic. But what happens is Prism can read a Swagger slash OpenAPI definition file and provide mock, mock responses out of the examples. So blah, 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 hand-waving, open API. The key thing to see here is there are two examples, one for accepted and one for rejected. So in Windows, again, you're, this is where you're going to have to trust me. I've got two web servers, Selenium server, browser mob server. Uh, so let's just run the accepted scripts, which worked 30 seconds ago. So we'll see if it works. And this should just say, hey, this talk was accepted. It's Prism. That's a little bit of... JavaScript that is being pulled down from, again, one of the web servers uh, and just displaying the, the information. So without changing anything between my script, what Prism allows you to do is say, if you send a header over the wire of this preferred example, it will send back that, blah, that response that you defined. So in this case, in my example here, I've got Prism backwards because I'm that original. Um, so we can run the rejected script and it will come up and display the correct information. So what we've done is completely short circuit the API server to display or, or to pull information, in this case JSON, into our scripts, which is ridiculously useful when you are running just dumb clients. Um, on the front end and the logic's all on the, the back end. Um, I guess the buy die stuff can also do some of this shenanigans, but the advantage of using a tool like Prism is we also use this, uh, the same Swagger files to mock out the API for our native Android and native iOS clients. So when we update the Swagger files in one, all three projects get their information uh, immediately to run tests. How, how long do I have? 45 seconds. I'm just going to vamp until I make the alarm go off. <laughs> um, what else? Yes, there's a whole bunch of magic here. I'm going to put the, all, the, all of the scripts and the how-tos and everything in, the, uh, in a GitHub repo, and I will make sure that the conference committee has it to share out. So I don't know if I can vamp that much longer. Anyone? <laughs> can do like 13 seconds of questions? I just want to see how loud the alarm is. <laughs> is there a hook? There you go. All right. Thank you very much.